Dudley Riley is a unique American hero. You'll find in this interview that at 94 years of age, he has the incredible ability to recall dates, places, and events, including the time spent as a prisoner of war during World War II. Uh, I am Dudley Riley from Dawson Springs, Kentucky, and uh, I went to school for two years at Dawson Springs and volunteered for military service in the Army at the age of 18. In fact, I was uh, two weeks short of 18 when I was transported to Fort Knox and uh, the officer was swearing us in to the Army and said, I hope everybody here is uh, 18 years old. And I, me and my big mouth said, uh, I will be in two weeks. He said, out, go back sent me back home for two weeks, and a recruiter came to pick me up after my birthday in August 11th, 1940. I went to Fort Knox, Kentucky, and became a member of uh, the 16th Engineer Battalion in the 1st Armored Division. Uh, we were equipped with the uh, Bradley, no, not Bradley, but Grant tanks, and uh, uh, we trained for two years at, at uh, Fort Knox with the, uh, in communication with the tanks. We were building bridges, roads, laying mines uh, in, uh, ahead of the tanks. And many times we were out in front of the tanks and had to provide our own uh, uh, support with our with the rifles that we had. We worked with the grubbing hoe in one hand and the rifle in the other. And uh, we were pretty well trained when uh, it was apparent that uh, Hitler was going to invade the British Isles. And we were sent to Fort Dix, New Jersey, in preparation for transport overseas. 1941, uh, the 1st Armored Division was sent to uh, uh, southern Louisiana for what we called 41 maneuvers. While we were on maneuvers in Louisiana, there were abundance of copperhead and rattlesnakes, and the medical officer had advised us to uh, wrap a, a double-edged razor blade in a white handkerchief and store it in the breast pocket of our fatigues. In case we were snake bitten, he could uh, slice through the wound with the razor blade to induce bleeding. The uh, First Armored Division was playing war against the Second Armored Division, which was commanded by General George Patton. Uh, we fought a, a mock war back and forth across uh, Louisiana, and uh, then we moved up to Camp Polk for a month of rest. And uh, then we went by, uh, tr transported by highway. In fact, when the 1st Armored Division lined up on the highway, it was a convoy 30 miles long. So we disrupted a whole lot of civilian traffic on our way to South Carolina. South Carolina, we had another month of uh, maneuvers. Uh, this time it was against a different uh, infantry division. And uh, we spent the whole month there. And the 1st of December, we were headed back to uh, Fort Knox. And I think it took us about three days 
a, a bivouacking between. Anyway, on the fifth day of December, we got back to Fort Knox late in the afternoon, and uh, I uh, was able to get on the train and to Dawson Springs, and uh, I was considered on a weekend pass. So I went to Dawson Springs and was uh, spent Saturday night and uh, on uh, Sunday the next morning I was uh, going to catch the train back at 3.30 in the morning and we had overslept and we woke up and uh, I heard the train whistling as it uh, left the station in Dawson Springs. So there I was, AWOL. And uh, we went to the bus station and uh, to get a bus to Fort Knox. And uh, while waiting for the bus at the bus station at 1 p.m., the news broke that uh, Pearl Harbor was being bombed. Uh-oh. Here I was, a wall in wartime, uh, a, a fence to be shot for. Uh, I, I made it to uh, Henderson, Kentucky, and changed buses to Tip Top, which was one mile from Fort Knox. I walked the last mile from uh, Tip Top, Kentucky, to Fort Knox, and there was such an uproar in the company area that they never missed me as being AWOL, so I was spared the, the charges. Uh, we, that was uh, in uh, December 1941, and uh, we went into intensive training of the 1st Armored Division because it was uh, apparent that uh, Hitler was going to invade the British Isles and uh, we were transported to Ireland, and England, from England to North Africa and I was taken prisoner at North, in uh, North Africa. What was the temperature of the United States before the bombing of Pearl Harbor? kind of tepid. It, uh, I had volunteered before that and uh, they said, oh yeah, Dudley's going to the Army, in the Standing Army they called it. And uh, uh, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, everything changed. It was uh, all out then and everyone supported the military and uh, the military actions. And uh, when we invaded North Africa, we were, we were supported by the people and uh, well, well received. Before the bombing of Pearl Harbor, were the citizens in the United States even aware of who Hitler was? Oh yes, it was... Uh, it, it, it was on the uh, radio news of pe people who had radios. Everybody did not have, but there was a lot of word of mouth of uh, of, uh, of what Hitler would do next after he uh, went through those low countries and, and occupied all those. And uh, it was apparent that uh, England was his next target and that he would be invaded one of the British Isles, and that's why we were sent to Northern Ireland. Our tanks were, were supposed to be a deterrent against uh, Hitler's invasion.